what I did here is to create a new Maya scene because it's just gonna be a bit easier and lighter to visualize our shaders. So I've put in this HDRI. I also made sure to be working in the ACES color space in the color management, but also in the render view. So make sure you're doing that. And what I'm gonna do now is talk a little bit about ACES and how you can convert your textures using a Photoshop plugin. So you don't have to do it in Nuke as I showed earlier. You can also do it in Photoshop. So first let's download this HDRI. And if you don't convert it, look at how it looks. If you visualize it in sRGB, it looks fine. But then if you try to look at it in the ACES color profile, it's gonna be completely saturated. And that is simply because it hasn't been converted yet into the ACES color profile. So what you can do is go online and search for the ACES Photoshop plugin in Google, and you will find it quite easily. So you can just go ahead and download this little plugin, install it, and you will find it under filter, open Colorio. So in this case, what we have is the Sky Dome, and this Sky Dome is a 32-bit EXR. So in the input space, you want to make sure that you read this as utility linear sRGB, the same way as you would read it inside of Nuke, like I had showed earlier. And concerning the output, output space, we since we are writing an EXR 32-bit, you want to make sure to select ACES CG. So first, obviously, make sure you go and search for your um, OSIO configuration. So utility, utility linear sRGB to ACES CG, then you can just go ahead and name this properly and save it. And now you can see how it looks inside of Nuke and it should look perfectly fine. There you go. So now you have your Sky Dome that is visualized in the ACES color profile that has been properly converted. And the thing is that you will need to do this for all your textures. So let's start with this roof here. So what I am going to do is to export one of those roof textures from the Mega Scan Bridge to Maya, and I'm going to switch from EXR to JPEG. So I can show you guys how you can convert 8-bit and 16-bit textures, whether it's in JPEG or PNG, um, from the default sRGB to ACES. So let me just first quickly create a sphere onto which I can apply my material. And this is how it looks if we render this. So if I click on my sphere and if I go to the material attribute, you will see that the color space is going to be red. And that is because it is in default sRGB. So let's bring our albedo Mac in JPEG inside of Photoshop. And what you will want to do is to use once again our little plugin in Photoshop to convert to ACES, except that this time in the input slot, you're not going to put linear sRGB texture, but you want to go and select utility sRGB texture and the output space output sRGB. And if I click OK, you're going to see that it's going to make my texture darker. So this might be a bit weird at first, but this is actually normal because it's going to allow you to work with higher light values without losing contrast. That being said, if you want to have exactly what you have in Photoshop inside of your render, um, you can convert instead of utility sRGB texture to output sRGB. So you're going to have output sRGB in the input space and in the output space. And then it's going to be converted into ACES, except that it's going to look exactly the same. But technically, what you really want to do, if possible, is to work with the utility sRGB texture. So let's bring a little bit our output sRGB. And you can see that it switches from the red sRGB to ACES. So now it is in the ACES color profile, but it still looks exactly the same in the render view. But if now I put in um, the diffuse slot my utility sRGB texture, you will see that it's going to be darker. And technically, this is the most correct workflow. And I know it might be a bit weird that it's a bit darker. I would say that sometimes it is acceptable and sometimes it is not. And if it's really not acceptable, then just plug in the output sRGB. And I will even say that if it's too complicated for you to understand how this ACES workflow works, well, frankly, just pass it and work in default sRGB, don't convert your textures. I'm saying that because I know that it can be really confusing. And to be honest, it still is for me. I still need a lot of help whenever I need to work in certain color spaces. The reason I'm showing you guys this is because this is now really the standard when you work in a studio. So you will need to understand this to some extent. But for the sake of this course, if it's too confusing for you, just pass it because I'm not going to show you guys 
every time I convert my texture. It's just to give you an overview and to let you know that this exists actually and that in every studio we work in ACES.